Welcome to the club. This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. This podcast exists because we want you to win. And that's why we called it The Climb, Creating Leverage in the Music Business, C-L-I-M-B. It's going to take more than just your talent. You're going to have to come to the table with an audience, with some cash flow, with not potential, but real, a real reputation before you're going to get a big investor to come in and take you in, to another level or before you get a big record label to come in and take you to another level. So with that, I want to introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And what I love about Brent is he helps songwriters like you Turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and not only that, he connects you with the pro so you can actually get an at-bat there. Uh, so you can find Brent real easy at songwritingpro.com if you need to reach out. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns the Daredevil Production. They help you find your sound and they help you grow your audience so you can become the artist that everybody loves and so you can get paid. Daredevil has worked with multi platinum. Yeah, let's keep it a secret. You can get back. <laughs> Daredevil has worked with multi platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production singular, no S, and there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. <laughs> hey, brother, what's happening, man? Man, I'm here. I'm hanging in here trying to stay motivated because uh, this is like our fifth go around trying to record this episode. <laughs> and. Um, the you little know? tech issues here, like, you know, the, there's, there's lots of speed bumps when you make a move, like we moved into this, uh, into this killer new building and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're still ironing some stuff out. Uh, we've got some more potholes to fill, but um, it, trust me, the road, once we get it widened and dialed in, it's going to be way better than where we were before. So I'm super stoked about it. Um, I, I am too, as little, you know, a little, little hurt, but you know what, I'm, we're staying motivated and we're trying it again, which is actually the, the perfect lead up to the episode we're talking about today because oh, today's episode what, what, is what are we all this it's all about motivation this is seven ways songwriters can stay motivated because you know what when you're climbing it's uphill baby it's hard some days are steeper than other days but you these are seven ways to help you stay motivated on your climb just like we had to stay motivated to keep recording this episode over and over <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. Well, listen, before we get into the seven ways, we've got a brand new five-star review I want to talk about. All right. Those are um, always welcome. Right? I mean, this mm -hmm. is from uh, by lifeishardmusic.com. Uh, you know, more to your point. More right? uh, <laughs> appropriate, yeah. It's, difficult. it's going to be a struggle, so you better be motivated. You better love it. Um, the Climb Podcast is a gold nugget that is waiting to be mined. Climb on board, no pun intended, and get ready for a wealth of information that has clear value and application for artists and songwriters navigating the new pathways of today's music industry. Rob Lutzweg. Thank right. you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Rob, the only issue I have with that is you said no pun intended. Rob, you should always have every pun intended. So, <laughs> so says own the it, pun. Rob. So, own so, hey, it. One, one quick thing before we get into that. If you haven't joined the Climb community, join the Climb community. Go to Facebook, search for the Climb community, ask, ask to be let in. We will let you in. We let everybody in. And if you are bad boys and girls with a shameless um, idiocy, we will we'll roadhouse you. Uh, yep. Also, subscribe to the podcast. This way, uh, you don't have to wait for the promos to come out and all like that. It gets right in your podcast player. By the way, some of you, I, I find this, Brent, all the time. I, I, most people, if you don't normally listen to podcasts, and we might be your first podcast that you listen to, whether you have an Android or whether you have an iPhone, you have a podcast player that came with it. And a lot of times people get rid of the icon because they clean up their screen and they, they're not... They, not using it so it makes sense to get rid of it but now you're going to use it so if you just go to podcast players on your app store you can download the one that already came with the phone and uh and then just subscribe to us on there you'll be good to go and of mm -hmm. course if you like this information like rob lutzwick did with this five star review and we're very grateful for that please share it with your friends there's other musicians that you know other songwriters that you know that could benefit from this information and uh we really want to uh to get out to get out there and help as many people as we can all right. Yep. All right. And help people and help you stay motivated. So, you know, for every person pulling a U-Haul into Nashville, there's somebody moving back home. 
because they just don't have the heart anymore. So how do you give yourself the best chance to keep going? Today, we're going to talk about a few ways. Specifically, we're going to talk about seven, but let's go ahead and start with point number one, shall we? Point number one. Point number one, you know. All right. Connect with your why. If you don't have a clear understanding of why you write, it's really hard to answer that Dark Valley question of, why should I keep writing? When the music business knocks you down, and it will, spoiler alert, you need to know why getting up matters. Maybe not why it matters to the world, but at least why getting up matters to you. Okay, here's some examples of whys. Maybe you'll see yourself in one of these. Maybe you write because you know that's how you're wired and you'll go crazy if you abandon it. So you write almost for self-preservation. Like, I have to be true to who I am. If I don't write, my head's going to explode. I'll be reaching for the prescriptions. That's, that's that a why. Me. Why do you keep writing? Because I go crazy if I don't. Maybe you write uh, to leave a legacy of song for your children's children. Maybe you write to share life lessons, to remind yourself as well as other people of hard-earned truth, right? I write to make the world a better place. Maybe it's to prove to yourself that you can do it. Or maybe you write to make people smile for three minutes in what is often a heartbreaking world. Those are examples of why, like why do I do this? So whatever drives you to write, you need to have a clear picture of it. That why is what will give you a reason to dust yourself off and get back in the arena on those hard days on your climb. So that's the, the big overview, like, why do I do this? Big question. If you understand mm-hmm. that and have a clear picture of it, oh, I don't feel like, you know, I'm tired. I've been working all week. Why am I going to sit down at my guitar or my notebook and write? Why? Well, I know why. I write for this, that, or the other reason. If I don't, I'm going to be a bad person. <laughs> I'm going to be hard to live with or whatever that why <laughs> is. If you understand that, that's your answer to that question. Why should I bother? You know, and on those days, you're not getting the positive feedback. You're not getting the the accolades, the attaboys, all that stuff. Your why kind of goes beyond that. All right, that's point number one. Number two, a way to stay motivated. Celebrate the small victories. Okay, so you don't want to ignore or downplay the small victories, especially early on in your journey. Be grateful. Let the little victories give you the confidence and the fuel for the journey. So hopefully they snowball and you start getting bigger victories. But remember, these are your victories. They don't have to meet anyone else's standard of what is worth celebrating. And that's really important for you to realize on your climb is that your victories may not look like other people's victories. And that's fine. Just because somebody over there that you're watching that may be further up the mountain isn't celebrating this certain type of victory anymore doesn't mean you shouldn't celebrate it. Doesn't mean it's not a victory. You Be concerned with your climb. You don't have to meet anyone else's standards of what is worth celebrating. I'll give yeah, you an example. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Go, okay, I was going to say, um, I, I didn't hear your example, so I don't want to take away from that. I haven't heard what you're going to do, but mm-hmm. um, sometimes these small little sort of insignificant uh, or mildly significant victories turn into a relationship that creates a much bigger victory later. Mm-hmm. Uh, with regards to this podcast, I you know, reached out to disc makers a number of years ago and, and got connected with them. Um, with Andre, who's, who does, uh, who's in charge of their blog and all their mm-hmm. online sort of medium stuff. And he liked my writing and he decided to, to do one, one post and see how it went. And then we made a deal to do like three posts a year. And we did that for a couple of years. And now that's escalated to a lot more. And then that led to the relationship that got the podcast that's now being um, shared on Disc maker's blog. So, mm-hmm. uh, it, but you know, I mean, hey, one more outlet for a blog page, not as significant, but it was significant, right? It's like right. it's bigger than it seemed. Looking back now, it seems like a small step, but it was really like a huge step. So grateful for Andre. If you're listening to this man, thank you so much. And, and, to, and to Lucy and everybody over at Disc Makers. But um, it, sometimes those small little moments, that moment you meet somebody, that one dinner you have that doesn't really mm-hmm. turn into anything turns into something way bigger later. Right. I agree. And, and thank you, Andre and, and everybody over at Disc Makers, because we're starting to build a relationship as, as well with my blog. And, and I appreciate it. And I'm thankful for it. And one thing, um, for a few years, some buddies and I, so specifically Matt Klein and Anthony Oreo, uh, we passed yeah. around a football. We call it the game ball. All right. Because, you know, coming from a sports background, you know, high school, you know, somebody had a good game, they get the game ball. 
So we did that too. Anthony's a big sports guy, a huge Eagles fan. So he's rooting right now for the Eagles in the Super Bowl whenever this drops. But <laughs> I got a story about that too. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so when one of us would have a music related victory, that person would get the game ball. So it was like a traveling trophy between three, you know, close friends. I love so that. It was, it was fun. We'd get together, you know, we, when the next time we'd write is usually when we, you know, pass it around and we'd get a picture, you know, with it, whoever's getting in and we, you know, just have a little celebration ceremony. And these weren't, you know, it got passed around from anything from like, I got an independent cut to, I renewed my publishing deal or I got a publishing deal or big co-writes with somebody or first demo sessions, whatever it was, you know, that felt like a victory and a, and a step forward for each person, whatever it was that we'd all celebrated. And so those weren't the victories that like Craig Wiseman in town would be celebrating, but they were new positive steps for us as young writers and, you know, artists like as for Anthony. So it gave us a reason to celebrate together, right? So sometimes even when you have a victory, you may not have really people to celebrate with that are involved in that particular victory, but this gave us a reason to all celebrate together. And we had a friendly rivalry going because each one of us wanted to get the game ball back on our own mantle, you know? Yes. And we wanted to keep it moving like hot potato, like, I want it back. I want to get a win. And, but you're happy when your brother gets it back because something good happened for him. Didn't take away from the good thing that happened to you. You know, now you just want to get it back. So that's one thing we did to, to keep ourselves motivated and give us, you know, celebrate those little victories with and have a community there. So something like that, if you can have, is, a, you know, is a great thing. One, one more thing on that. That brings it like everybody, like just this, this is like building a business. So this is in regards to your team. Maybe if you're in a band, if you're, you know, if you get like what Brent's saying, if you work with other writers, everybody loves and thrives on acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. And um, I've, I've got a 25 year sales career history. I have been the national sales director for a number of different companies. And this one company I was working for was uh, like, it was a phone room that I was sort of charged with, bringing back from the dead, if you will, the life, the energy was out of it. And we had goals we had to meet. And so one of the things I did, it's, this sounds so silly and so insignificant, but there was this amazing little hole in the wall restaurant that was about as big as your bedroom. And it was called the Franco's in the Valley in Los Angeles. And they had this incredible sandwich that I absolutely freaked out over. I'm I'm missing it right now. It was like a salami (laughs) sandwich. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. And and so I was looking in the sales team. I, I obviously we had lots of awards and kudos for like the top guys in the room or the top girls in the room, like whoever was just a closer and just a monster, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on the phone got, got lots of accolades, but I was interested in creating something else for the most improved person, right? Like I mm-hmm. wanted to get people just into the idea of how we were approaching this and, and somebody who was most improved. So we gave this every week, somebody would get the sandwich for the most improved numbers. And that became a thing. Yeah. People wanted the same. They were jealous when somebody else got the sandwich, like in a good way, not in a bad way, but they wanted right. that sandwich. You know, they wanted that recognition. And, and so if you do that silly stuff within your team, like that game ball, man, it felt good when you got that game ball, didn't it? Oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah you get to set it in it's the writing room or at, at your house and you're like, yeah, I did, you know, just a little visual reminder because so much of the stuff that we do, you don't get visual reminders, not everything ends up being a plaque you can hang on the wall, right? Yeah, and every day you walk past that game ball, you're like, oh, that's right, I, I did I the man. I had, a, I had a good game, I had a good game. <laughs> I'm the man this week, yeah. Yeah. All right, I love that. I love that one, that's a good yep. one. All right, here's another way, and this really dovetails off of the, the game ball stuff, is connect with, a, uh, connect with a supportive community. So we all need people who encourage, support, and believe in us. They can be online or they can be face-to-face and be family or friends, co-writers or non-songwriting creatives. So it doesn't really matter who they are, just that they support you and you want to be sure and support them too. For example, actually just this morning, I was, I had what I call the, the bro fist. I had a breakfast with two of my brother-in-laws that live here, Matt Klein again, and uh, Shannon Payne. So they're two of my brother-in-laws live the brofist, I know that sounds awful. Awesome. And uh, dude, we just sit around and say, "Dude." Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we get together at this little country diner that's kind of halfway between where we meet, and we're just getting a jump on being old men sitting around having coffee at the country diner. But you know, we meet there, and and each of us owns a business. You know, I had the songwriting, the songwriting pro, Freddie, and that stuff. You know, we're each entrepreneurs. Shannon, you know, is like a contractor and and builder, and and Matt is doing, you know. He's, 
uh, selling stuff online. He's on Amazon and eBay and he does all this stuff. So we each have, we each run in our own little mini empire here that we're trying to build. And, yeah. you know, we're family and we're, we're followers of Christ and we're husbands and we're dads and we're, you know, we have things that bind us. So we get together and we try to make sure we have some time just for us and talk about taxes and business licensing and, and how we're doing with family and that kind of stuff and just kind of support each other. And we do it once a month. We've been doing it for a few months now, but it's something to look forward to and it's a way to, you know, help each other out and just support each other and say, hey, what you need prayer for and that kind of stuff. So, you know, we did that this morning. And so that's nice. We look forward to it. Um, for you as a writer, it might be the climb community on Facebook yes. where you can start meeting people. I have, you know, the Songwriting Pro Facebook group. Uh, there's freddy.com, which uh, I host, which is a songwriter community. And, you know, we love, Johnny and I know we love watching songwriters like you making progress, earning victories. Like, you know, when we've had Jonathan Cochran saying, hey, I tried this thing on, you know, took some of the stuff from the climb and, and applied it. Here's been my results. And we've had some other people start. Uh, I think Uncle Brent has started, you know, applying some of this stuff and posting some of it in the climb community. Not me, yeah. different Uncle Brent. And that's great. We can come on there and say, hey, that's awesome. Or have you thought about this? And you know, celebrate with them and stuff. So even if you live way out in way outsville, if, you're, if you have the capability of listening to this, you have a, the capability of joining the client community or one of those groups online and, and getting in where some people understand you and you're on the same climb and you can support each other. So that's another good way of, of staying motivated. Cause you see yeah, I, I other people that. doing stuff and going on in the clown community too. Man. Yeah. Killer. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's move on to number four. So join the climb community, Facebook, just go there and look climb community group. You'll find it. All right. Number four is to display visual reminders. And again, this is kind of the game ball thing that hit on a lot of, a lot of these. Wow. My dog got in the room with me. How did she do that? All right. My door's closed. Anyway, display visual reminders. So remind yourself that you're a songwriter. Remind yourself of your dreams and your goals and remind yourself of your victories. Uh, so you might want to create a vision board with pictures of your songwriting dream come true. You know, some people do vision boards. They get a, I don't know, a cork board and they stick pins in it and pictures out of magazines or they print off online of, you know, a ACM award or a Grammy or people stand up at a number one party and you, you know, cut out your face and stick it on somebody's body or whatever, you know, those pictures you want to, you know, visual reminders of where you want to go and also of some of the victories. Like for me, it was the game ball sitting on the desk. Uh, or maybe you got a good review from a community like freddy.com. Print that sucker out, hang it up in your writing space. Yeah, I yes. know people that, you know, they've joined, uh, maybe the did the NSAI song contest or, or different sort of contest where you might get some feedback. And I know people, you know, hang on to those things. And some people have posted them in their writing rooms going, Hey, look, I scored an eight out of 10 on this and that, and, you know, it's progress and it's shown me where I can improve and it's shown me an attaboy of what, I, what I'm doing well. And they keep that up as a, a visual reminder of how far they've come and where they want to go. So, you know, it doesn't have to be a gold platinum or plywood, <laughs> you know, get it. <laughs> If you get an indie cut or something, get a CD frame, hang that sucker up to remind yourself that somebody liked one of your songs well enough to record it. I mean, we did that with my, my first cut, independent cuts, good buddy of mine, Tim Meitzen. We, uh, when we were still living in Arkansas, we wrote this album together. He was the artist. You know, I was his co-writer on most everything. Went, recorded this, uh, the stuff, did a record, printed like, I don't know, a thousand of them, probably through disc makers. And, you know, when we sold 300 of them, the joke was we went triple plywood. <laughs> and so I have it and I need to post it uh, when this drops. I need to post a picture of the climb community, but I went and got a frame. I didn't know about the CD frames or whatever, but I just got a picture frame, got a couple CDs, probably AOL discs that came in the mail. And I got like wood looking contact paper, like you put in the bottom of a drawer or something, put it on there, cut it out. So these look like little plywood discs. Looked like a little wooden disc and I put them and I framed them with the CD and things like for sales of 300 units, triple plywood. <clears throat> and I presented it to my co-writer. I kept one for myself and I gave one to Darren at blue chair studio where we did the recording. And so, you know, that was hanging up in his, in his studio for a while. And it was just a visual reminder. Like we accomplished something. Wow. Look at that. You know, we That's sold awesome. a few who knew we had 300 friends and family. <laughs> yeah, man. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Another, another way to stay, 
um, motivated is, you know, keep your guitar or your writing notebook out where it's visible and available. Don't keep them hidden in the closet or in a drawer somewhere. You're a writer. Don't let yourself forget that. So again, that's a visual reminder. I don't stick my guitar in the closet. I leave it on the stand right beside the TV. So when I'm watching TV, I'm like, oh, you know, there's that guitar right there. I should probably grab that. It's a way to stay motivated. Don't let that part of yourself go to sleep. Don't forget about it. Keep something visual to remind you who you really are. Yeah. All right, we'll fly through these because I know times are going. So number five, speaking of that, pace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is a marathon, all right? It's not a sprint. You want to be persistent, but you also want to be patient. You have to find a family, money, music balance that is sustainable over the course of years and not just months. Sure, there are going to be seasons of harder hustle than other seasons. Life has seasons. Maybe you got a newborn and so you just can't hustle as hard as you were before. Or maybe now the kids are out of the house so you can hustle more. Whatever that is, you want to pace yourself. And remember, it's a long climb. It's a long journey. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So that might mean you can't quit your day job just yet. It might mean that you can only write one night a week for now. You know, sure, we all want instant gratification, but patience pays off and you want to be patient. So you think if I'm going to stay, I don't want to burn out, burn my bridges. I know sometimes I've worked, you know, we've talked about this on another podcast, you know, I've hustled too hard, more 24 seven and paid a price on family life where I was neglecting my wife way more than I should have. That's not sustainable. It's not good and it's not worth it. So, and it takes, then you're, then you're way out of it because then you have unhappy home and you've got to rebuild those bridges because you screwed up. Pacing yourself for the long haul is going to pay dividends. So you're not, so it doesn't come down to, well, it's her or the music. Right. Um, you know, or, Oh, I lost my job because they caught me writing songs again. Now I got to go get some, you know, that sort of stuff. You just want to pace yourself at a sustainable pace. Keep persistent, but be patient about it. Make sense? Love that. Yeah. All right. Number six, we're, we're getting close to the finish line here. Protect your positive attitude. Okay. To stay in it for the long haul, you have to believe success is possible. And a lot of that belief simply comes from your mindset. Seeing the glass as half empty will cause your dreams to die of thirst. I'm going to say that again because it's tweetable. Seeing the glass is half empty will cause your dreams to die of thirst. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Not only does what you say reflect what's in your heart, but I think it reinforces and shapes what's in your heart. So you want to practice speaking positively. Strengthen that part of yourself. Now, you know, I'm not a, you know, I'm not trying to be frou-frou, whatever kind of stuff. I'm not about speaking into the world. It makes it exist. I'm not that kind of guy, but as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you're always looking at the positive and you're saying, Oh, these doors just won't open for me because of this and that and the other, you know, it's all who, you know, and nobody wants to know me and all this stuff. That's not helpful. And the more you believe that, the more you're not going to look for an open door because you, you keep telling yourself they don't exist. And also, if you keep telling yourself that, like, oh, you know, no one wants to give me the time of day, you're going to knock on somebody's door once. And then you're going to move on because you already are telling yourself that they're not going to answer that door anyway. But if right. you watch and you're like, well, I just got to keep knocking. One of these is going to be a yes. I just got to keep knocking. There's going to be a yes. Then you're going to keep knocking and you're going to try harder and you're going to do more and you'll be more persistent. And the odds are increasing then that somebody is going to open that door because you want to prove yourself right. Right? Yeah. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. So it's not speaking to the world and it maybe attracts it to you as much as just you're going to, you're going to act differently and you're going to proceed in a positive direction because you're speaking positively and thinking positively. And therefore, you know, you're just going to keep on trying. You put more balls in the air and one of them is bound to go in the hoop. So for example, you know, have you had a bad publisher meeting? Don't focus on the disappointment. Maybe focus on, what you were able to learn from that meeting, even if all you learned is the fact that you have more to learn. <laughs> oh, the bar's not where I thought it was. Well, that's valuable. Did you get a song to an artist, but they didn't record it? Well, focus on the fact that you were actually able to get a song heard. I bet that wasn't always bat. the case. You got an at bat. That probably wasn't, you probably weren't even in the stadium before. So yep. you've made progress. I remember when I first moved to town 
And uh, I had a little bit of a publisher relationship with Norman DeVazor at RPM when I first moved to town and got to know um, Tracy Jewell a little bit. And she was over at RPM. So when I moved here, I went and met with her. And there was a song that they were kind of interested in called When God Made You that I wrote with my buddy Tim that was on that record, I think. And um, the, the triple plywood. Anyway, so I went and met with Tracy and just catching up with her, maybe playing some new songs. And I think I played her When God Made You just because I want to make sure that she knew it. She's like, oh, I know this one. I played it for Tim. I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I played for, uh, she's like ah, he, you know, he passed. I didn't care that he passed. I was so jazzed that Tim McGraw heard my song. Like I had just moved to town and Tim McGraw heard my song, <laughs> you know, be cool forever. Yeah. I was so stoked by that because like this progress. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever get that just to, that reinforcement. I could have, you know, oh, man, that's my, one of my best songs and he passed on it. Dude, he heard it. And that was a big step for me at the time. It's still, it's still really hard. It's still really hard to get a song to McGraw's. So I'd still be excited about that. But you know, it's, it's that positive thing that led me on to go, all right, I got an at bat. Let's go swing some more. Yeah. You know? Love it. So yes, try to focus on the less on the silver lining. Even if it is a dark cloud, that's just going to keep you going. All right. Last one, make a new connection. This is a way to stay motivated. So yes, we'd all love to suddenly become best buddies with, say Tim McGraw, for example, but that's probably not going to happen today or tomorrow or the next day. Right. But who can you reach out to? Where can you become a blip on somebody's radar and begin to build a relationship? The music business is both based on both music and relationships. So sometimes when the music isn't working as much as we'd like, we can keep some forward momentum and some forward progress by focusing on relationship building. For example, like, well, publisher X didn't love my song, but hey, I got to meet with, you know, hit writer Z this week. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to meet somebody. That's something positive I can hang on to as some sort of forward movement. So you can't always make people like your song, but hey, if I can get out, even if it's online or whatever, I met somebody, made a connection, there's some sort of something I can look at too. Just keeps you more motivated. So that's, you know, that's an important thing. Because sometimes the well's a little bit dry riding. You feel in a rut creatively. But then there's this whole other side of the business. Like, yeah, but I met so-and-so. I think that may turn into a co-writing relationship or may do something else. That's just another way to stay stay motivated. So those, those are most of what I got. Anything you want to kind of add in on that as we're man, I, I, wrapping man, up? I, think, I, I love that. I mean, I, like I, I've been to – when I moved out to L.A., I, I went to uh, – there used to be this place called Highland Grounds on, mm-hmm. on Highland and, and they had this like killer writer's night that was sort of open mic-ish and uh, this really nice outside patio and the, the writer's night was inside and I just remember hanging out like feeling really uncomfortable because I didn't know anybody there but I forced myself to go, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm really weirded out, right? Mm-hmm. And I just happened to be sitting next to this, uh, this black dude and, and he's like, uh, and I'm playing something and he's like, he just starts talking to me and his energy was like so cool. Like it just loved him, you know, right off Mm -hmm. the bat, like just this, the right. He said, man, see, I like go ahead and play something play that thing in four, four. He goes, all rap is in four, four. Right. So he, he just says, play that, play that riff again. So I start playing that riff and he just starts rapping right now. This is (laughs) not my lane, right? This is not my wheelhouse, but he's blowing me away. Like it was so, and we had such a good time from that one little meeting. Right. From that one, he reached out to me. I didn't reach out to him. Right. I was like mm. this little bubble, like, oh, uh, why am I here? What am I doing? Freaking out, like doing my artist, brooding artist thing. <laughs> and he pops the bubble, comes in, sits next to me and we do this incredible thing. And I just love this voice. And I was like, dude, like, I really want to work with you. And I ended up getting him an at bat. Now, this is a this is a situation that didn't, uh, it didn't pan out, but we got evidence of it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my, my boy, uh, Mike Ansevec, I grew up with, is like a really big ad guy and he was working with XM Sirius Satellite Radio at the time. And they had a license, they just happened to have like a licensing issue. They wanted to license Snoop Dogg, what's my name, but the, the, the XM drug their feet on the licensing and the media buy was already in place. So now they had to have some music for the commercial that they were going to shoot. And it couldn't be Snoop Dogg because it was going to take like six weeks to get those contracts done. And the media, they were already past that 
deadline mm-hmm. for the meeting to buy. So my boy calls me and, and literally I had just moved into a new house. So my studio was in shambles, right? Mm-hmm. It was not put together. And he's like, Hey, I need you to record Snoop Dogg's What's My Name, but you can't do Snoop Dogg's What's My Name. Can you do that? I'm like, I know the guy. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I had this dum dum bum 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 on the keyboard thing going. He comes in and just blows this stuff, dude. That was incredible. And I sent it to Answer, and they were freaking out. Like I got a call back during the meeting. Like, who is this guy? This guy's like incredible. I'm like, I know. And and they liked it so much that they they synced it to the commercial. Sent mm-hmm. me a copy of it, and it was at the last minute that this was right when Black Eyed Peas were starting to explode. Mm-hmm. In the last minute, Black Eyed Peas calls from Europe and says, we'll do it for this and agrees like to waive whatever. And they, they got the deal, but I've got, the, I've, got, I've got it. But that happened because I forced myself to go out there. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't, hadn't met that guy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he wouldn't have been able to do it if he hadn't met me. You know what I mean? And so it was one of those things where I was just trying to keep my artist thing going. And I just was like, I got to get out of here and go to this. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go do something out of my comfort zone. And I did it. And mm-hmm. there you go. I mean, you never know. Got that at bat. Yeah. All right. And uh, that's a cool story. I want to hear that sometime. All right. So speaking of the new connections, you know, I don't like to throw out suggestions without providing an opportunity to put them into practice, right? It's kind of one of my things. So I have a good opportunity for you climbers out there. In February, so as this drops, next month, I'm hosting Freddie's Know the Row event. And the guest this quarter is hit songwriter Byron Hill. Now, this is your chance to sit down face-to-face online with a real deal professional songwriter. Since moving to Nashville and signing his first publishing deal in 1978, Byron's songs have generated more than 700 recordings and have been released on 91 industry-certified gold and platinum albums and singles. That's a lot of success. And so Byron has also produced hit songs like I'm in Canada and different things. I don't even know what all Byron's done. He's done so much, but I know he's done a lot. And so basically you and I both want to know what Byron has to share. And this is a chance to make a new connection, to get an ad bat, to get a little bit of literal FaceTime with a hit songwriter producer, because this is online. You can join us from anywhere in the world. Uh, We do a zoom video conference. And so your face pops up there and I'll be talking to Byron and he's going to be answering your questions. So it's your chance to talk to him. I don't care if you're up in Des Moines's Timbuktu, wherever you are, (laughs) you can join us. And then, you know, get a chance to talk to, well, talk to me, but mainly the big guy is Byron and get a little bit of FaceTime with him. It's an at bat. It's making a little bit of a new connection to go, I talked to a hit songwriter. You know, he wrote full hearted memory for George Strait. He wrote born country for Alabama and he's still writing songs. He writes for Dan Hodges music. And so he's still, he's still doing it. So here's the deal. You can join us online from anywhere in the world on Thursday, February 8th, 2018 from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. Okay, and this special event is free to members of freddy.com. That's F-R-E-T-T-I-E.com. But don't worry. If you, for some reason, don't want to take advantage of all of Freddy's, you know, membership benefits, you can still just purchase a one-off ticket to the event. But the deadline for that is January 31st. So you can get all that information. Go to giftfrombrent.com, download my free ebook, get you on the Songwriting Pro Insiders List, and I'll be sending out all the information. If you're listening to this in the future, we do these once a quarter over at Freddie, and then they go into the members area video archive so you, members can go and catch up on the ones they missed and all that good stuff. So you can check that out at Freddie, F-R-E-T-T-I-E dot com, or again, download gift from brent.com, get my free ebook, and you'll get information every time one of these rolls around. But yes, yeah, good opportunity to make a connection, learn some stuff, hopefully help you stay motivated on your climb. And that's all I got. There you go, man. Get yourself an at bat. You're going to learn either you're ready to go or you're not quite ready yet, but you're going to find out where you're at and that information is good. You can keep moving forward. So um, listen, that brings us to the end of another Killer Climb episode. Once again, join the Climb community if you haven't already on Facebook. um, Subscribe to the podcast. It goes automatically every Tuesday morning right into your phone so you can listen to that on your drive into work. And if you like this stuff, share it. Let everybody know. Spread it around. And uh, we can try to help as many people as we can. So this podcast exists. Once again, we want you to win. Keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. 